Hello everybody and welcome back to the Ultimate Fashion History's 20th Century Style Icon Series. In this episode, we're heading back to the 30s to meet the indescribably glamorous Dolores Del Rio. Today is August the 3rd, 2017, and when I woke up this morning and turned on my computer, this is what I saw. Dolores Del Rio as a subject for the Google Doodle of the day. Google are honoring Dolores Del Rio's birthday today, and I'm so glad that they are. In saying that, I'd like to note that Dolores was suggested to me a few weeks ago by UFH group member Hamadaz, who always comes up with great ideas. Anyway, I'm really glad that Google are honoring Dolores Del Rio today so that people will click on this image and learn all about her, because I do fear that some of these iconic characters from the past are being forgotten today. Sure, every single one of my students knows who Audrey Hepburn was, of course, but I tell you, not one of them has ever heard of Dolores Del Rio, and she was such a huge star. But more importantly, she's a very important figure because she was genuinely the first Latin American crossover star. And we associate Dolores with the high glamour of Hollywood's golden age in the 1930s. Now, it would be easy to assume that this was some kind of rags to riches story, but nothing could be further from the truth. Dolores Del Rio, and believe it or not, that was her real name. Doesn't it sound like one of those Hollywood inventions? But in fact, her husband's last name was Del Rio, one of her husbands. And so her name was actually authentic. Dolores was born into Mexican aristocracy. She was incredibly wealthy. Unfortunately, her family lost their fortune in the Mexican Revolution. But that didn't prove to be too much of a problem for Dolores because she then married somebody who was also a member of the Mexican aristocracy who had not lost their fortune, so wealth surrounded her constantly. However, she was a very insecure child. Her first ambition was to be a dancer, and she joined a little dance company to train, but she was terribly insecure about her looks and was convinced she was an ugly duckling. So her mother commissioned famous Mexican artist Alfredo Ramos Martinez to do her portrait so that she could see how beautiful she really was. What a wonderful thing for a parent to do if only all parents were as wise as Dolores Del Rio's and commissioned famous artists to do our portraits. I know my parents certainly weren't that wise when I was this age. It was all, why are you so fat? What's wrong with your face? <laughs> so she really was surrounded by love as well, which is perhaps what made her such a lovely and loving person. Alfredo Ramos Martinez was not the only famous artist to paint her portrait. Here is Diego Rivera painting Dolores Del Rio's portrait. And here is the final product. It's beautiful, isn't it? Dolores Del Rio started in silent movies, but transitioned very easily into talkies. Like Bird of Paradise in 1932, where she actually plays a Polynesian beauty in a very risque wardrobe. And one of my favourites, Flying Down to Rio with Fred Astaire, which really did secure her image as one of these absolutely glamorous, aristocratic 1930s high fashion movie stars. But she had a long career. Here she is playing Elvis's mum in Flaming Star. Elvis, he gets around. There are so many 20th century style icons on UFH who have starred with Elvis Presley. I haven't done Elvis himself. Oh, but I will. When she first arrived in Hollywood, the fact that she came from an aristocratic background and had a lot of money was certainly played up in the publicity surrounding her. And I've read that the reason this was so was because the idea of an aristocrat was more palatable to North American audiences. I disagree with this completely. I think the reason that people spoke about Dolores Del Rio's aristocratic roots was because it was the 1930s. It was the Great Depression. And everybody Everybody was obsessed with wealth. Think about movies of the era. They were all about high society, weren't they? They were about people with money. People were obsessed with money. And this idea of aristocratic backgrounds really fed into the beauty ideal of the era. And Dolores Del Rio 
absolutely had the face beloved of the era, this perfect, classic, chiseled, sort of alabaster beauty that everybody loved. It was aristocratic. It was perfectly formed. It was chiseled. It was finely drawn. Look at her face here. This is the poster girl for 1930s beauty. Then take a look at another celebrated beauty of the era, Joan Crawford. They have essentially the same bone structure. And I know that this picture of Joan Crawford appearing right now is going to send my friend and star student Calm into apoplexies of delight. He is a huge Joan Crawford fan. But I'm showing jo Joan here to illustrate that Dolores Del Rio's beauty corresponded absolutely to the aesthetic of the era. And in terms of fashion, she was the clothes horse of the 1930s. She wore everyone. Travis Banton, Scaparelli, Adrian, Ori Kelly. It goes on and on. And here are just some images to show you what a wonderful relationship Dolores Del Rio had with fashion. She loved fashion. She loved it in her personal life as well. She spent a lot of her money on clothes. She loved them. And also her day wardrobe, so 1930s, with these beautifully tailored suits that she was very fond of. And I love this picture above all things. There is Dolores with her pal Marlena Dietrich. Whenever Marlena Dietrich pops up anywhere, I always find myself smiling. Look at the dress that Dolores Del Rio is wearing here. This is from her personal wardrobe. Now listen, I don't know who designed that dress, but with that novelty print, I am taking a guess that it is Scaparelli. Correct me if I'm wrong, because I would love to know, but Scaparelli was very fond of novelty prints. And and look at these two gorgeous, stylish women standing in front of Frida Kahlo's famous self-portrait, one of them. In fact, Dolores Del Rio was very good friends with Frida. And there she is with Diego Rivera, Frida Kahlo. And look at how fantastic Dolores Del Rio looks. Well, so does Frida Kahlo. This is not from the 1930s. This is from the 1940s. Dolores Del Rio's iconic cat costume in Journey into Fear. I don't have much to say about this apart from the fact that it's wonderful. And if I didn't include it in this episode, I know I would get in trouble. Dolores Del Rio's Hollywood career started to decline a little bit in the late 1930s. And so she returned to Mexico where she became a huge figure in what is known as the Golden Age of of Mexican cinema in the 1940s. She was a very serious actress. She did return to Hollywood periodically, starring in various vehicles such as Flaming Star with Elvis Presley. She appeared on American television frequently, but she really devoted her later life to charitable causes involving theatre, involving thespians. For example, in Mexico, she started a daycare centre for members of the Mexican Screen Actors Guild, for example. So she really did good things with her life. And she always looked exquisite. She really had such a strong sense of style and the importance of personal style that it never abandoned her. I love this photograph. It's from 1980, I think. And there she is with Cesar Romero and, of course, Rita Hayworth, both of these women looking so beautiful. And I also think it's interesting that the two of them shared a love interest once, not at the same time. Rita Hayworth, of course, was married to Orson Welles, and Orson Welles was also romantically involved with Dolores Del Rio, who famously dumped him via telegram, which was probably the 1930s, 1940s equivalent to dumping somebody by text. But by all accounts, he deserved it. He had been philandering at the Rio Carnival. Dolores Del Rio died in 1983 and was beautiful up until the very end. And I think perhaps this had more to do with her philosophy than her natural good looks, because this is one of her most famous quotes. Beauty does not come with creams and lotions. God can give us beauty, but whether that beauty remains or changes is determined by our thoughts and deeds. I think that's very true. You end up with the face you deserve. And Dolores Del Rio ended up with such a beautiful face. It really is testimony to a life well led. So, happy birthday, Dolores Del Rio. 
I hope you've enjoyed this episode on the ultimate fashion history. You can contact me through my website, amandahalley.com. Like us on Facebook, as they say. Better yet, join our Facebook group. We always have loads of fun over there. Stay up to date with new episodes. Simply click the little bell under the channel art, then click send me notifications because I'm back every week with new episodes. But first, you have to click that little circle to subscribe. And as always, thanks ever so much for watching. Bye for now. <music>